Hello everyone, and we are back for the second half of tier four. Also, thanks to you all, I have very recently became monetized, which is insane. And absolutely, it's all thanks to you guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm still learning a lot of this whole YouTube thing, so bear with me on that. But thank you guys so much for allowing me to get to that opportunity. And hopefully we just keep going up from here. So again, thank you for watching. MIRL Colts, uh, the acronym MIRL refers to meet in real life, is in reference to the fact that several online internet cults actually form into real world cults that perform different ritualistic acts or things like that when they meet in person. Every bit of information I could find pointed towards a specific setting in which around the 2010s in Los Angeles there were several murders that occurred, supposedly by an internet cult that started online, but this is just in reference to that idea. The Toronto Protocol is in reference to French documents that were found in 1985. Supposedly this document was a French translation of a form that was handed out to several different world powers and world elites around the same time. The basis of this document was that in order to pass agendas into society that they first need to begin by breaking down ideas of family, ideas of tradition, uh, and things such as. One of the main things in the manifesto was destroying religion by indoctrinating communities with the idea that religion is not a good thing and should instead be handed off to governments and things like that to mandate what the people think. Uh, of course this all relates back to Illuminati, New World Order type stuff, but the reason it's called the Toronto Protocol is because it was originally discovered in Toronto, or by someone in Toronto. The Perestroika Deception, at least I think that's how it's pronounced, is in reference to a new uh, USSR idea that came out of the Cold War. Out of the Cold War, Gorbachev developed this idea of Perestroika, which is essentially saying that in order to further progress the communist ideal within Russia, that they need to be more subdued about it and not as gung-ho as they were during the Cold War in trying to push socialist ideas onto others. The idea of the Perestroika deception comes from KGB defector Anatoly Golitsyn, which said that Perestroika was just a subversion in order to get the world looking away from socialist ideas being implanted into other countries, and instead it would be done slowly through political uprising and behind the scenes movements and things like that. Essentially, the idea that communism is still on the rise just in a much more subtle and careful way than it was in the Cold War. Presentism is a philosophy very commonly seen in the modern world. It is the idea that uh, people need to be anti-critical about things that happen around them, such as the news, real world events, and things such as, and should instead focus on the here and now and simply consume media and things like that rather than thinking about what they're doing. Uh, the idea behind it is that New World Order Illuminati stuff purposefully injects this into the population to make them more submissive to whatever agendas they try to propagate. The Boots Void, or Burt's Void, not sure how to pronounce that, it is a region in space that is 330 million light years in radius. It is also known as the Super Void, and the reason it's called this, it is a peculiarly large amount of space for so few galaxies. Originally in 1960, it was estimated that only eight galaxies existed in this entire 330 million wide area. After modern research, it's believed the number is closer to 2000, but still that puts it at less than one tenth of the normal galaxy compaction that occurs throughout space. It raises the question as to why such a wide area of space is completely unpopulated. Some even take this theory to the extent and say that it is because of alien races that colonize and destroy galaxies as they come across from them, and we are simply seeing the aftermath of that. Yellow Cuban balloons is in reference to seven yellow balloons that were found in a box off the coast of Florida in the 1970s. Given the address and the date on the box and the condition of the box itself, it was estimated that these had been floating in the ocean for roughly eight weeks. The address on this box said that they were from the USSR to Cuba. When opening the box, they discovered seven identical yellow balloons that were all inflated with what seemed to be normal air lying in the bottom of the box. After doing research on them, there was absolutely nothing weird about the box itself. There was no wrong condition to the gas inside of the box, there was nothing special about the box itself, but for some reason these balloons were just being shipped in a crate to Cuba for seemingly no reason, and why were they floating in the middle of the ocean? 
It's still one of those old Cold War mysteries that have never been solved, and probably never will. Driver Kill JFK is specifically in mention to William Greer. And while initial reports that came out immediately after John F. Kennedy's murder believed him to be the shooter as he turns back to Kennedy in the Zapruder film before the shot goes out, the actual version of events makes a bit more sense. The driver, William Greer, as well as the passenger in the front seat were both CIA agents, and going into the idea that the CIA murdered Kennedy, things start to add up. For example, why after the first shot was fired did he slow down instead of hitting the gas, driving, turning around, doing anything, but he brought the car down to a 7 mile an hour speed. Also, keep in mind, after the first shot went out, him and the guy in the front seat seemed to duck in the picture before he turns around. If William Greer himself did not murder the president, the theory says that he was in the know on the circumstances that would lead to his death. So much so that Jackie, after the fact, said several times how odd it was his driving, and she blames John's death on the actions of William Greer in not reacting fast enough or not wanting to react fast enough. Fracking deaths refers to the fact that around fracking instances, there seems to be an uncharacteristically large amount of deaths from consequences of fracking. For example, it's estimated through reports that in Appalachia alone, roughly 1,200 to 4,600 people have been killed by side effects of fracking, i.e. be it air pollution, water pollution, and things such as. Given the places that these deaths occur, it is believed that the government knows that fracking causes these deaths and are either purposefully doing it in areas they want to exterminate or at least allowing it to happen to quell the local populace. Esoteric Hitlerism uh, is exactly what it says. It is combining ideas of Hitler from World War II with esotericism and says that the Third Reich was propagating several sort of universal spiritual ideas in their methodology and that in the more extreme versions of this, Hitler himself is a form of deity. All the research you do with this leads back to Agartha and Central Earth and the idea that Hitler essentially raised himself to godhood. Red Rooms are the name given to several dark web pages in which people are either killed or tortured for the enjoyment of others online. A lot of this as you read into it gets into human trafficking and while we know for a fact Red Rooms exist, uh, what makes it even scarier is that all of these people had to come from somewhere, more than likely abduction cases that happen around the US and the rest of the world every year. Plant intelligence is in reference to the theory that plants have a higher intelligence than initially thought of by people. What I mean by this is that we understand that plants react to certain stimuli in certain ways, such as trees will grow in the direction of sunlight, or certain mosses will react to being touched and things such as. Uh, it goes into a further level in saying that plants have a version of consciousness that we just don't understand, and the idea that nature is alive in more literal a sense than we normally mean it. Now come to talk to you about Last Thursdayism because I promised if this topic was ever covered in the iceberg I would let them is my girlfriend and Last Thursdayism expert Kayla. Mm -hmm. What is cool about it? <laughs> Hello. Last Thursdayism also known as the um, Omphalos hypothesis. I don't know how to say that. It's O M P H A L O S is an idea based around the book of Genesis and creationism that states that when God made the earth, he would have obviously had to make Adam and Eve fully grown with hair and navel, skin, toenails, and that the, the grass would have been months old grass at least, and the earth would have been fully formed in a way that made it look a million years old. The whole idea of it stems from Philip Henry Goss, who wrote a book with the same name, Amophilus. The natural progression of the idea and where the conspiracy theory comes in is that God or the creator, who whatever you believe in, could have ha could have done everything as soon as last Thursday, hence last Thursdayism. Which means that we could have been created just as early as last Thursday. Every memory, every thought, everything we ever th thought we felt would have been implanted into our brains as early as last Thursday. It's a very interesting theory, it's my favorite one ever, because to me it feels like, yeah, that totally could be possible. So. Thank you, Kayla. Acosmism is more of an abstract idea, and it essentially says that nothing in reality is real except for God. So what that means in a practical sense is that none of your experiences, none of what you know is reality. Instead, there is just a God or hierarchical being that is implanting these ideas into us. So essentially everything's an assimilation given to us by a deity. The Bouvet Island lifeboat is in reference to Bouvet Island, which is known to be the most uninhabited or uninhabitable 
island in the world. It is located north off the coast of Antarctica and is essentially a giant glacial rock that is formed that has absolutely no greenery or no sense of sustainability on it. In 1964, one of the first crews to ever go research the island, when they got to the island found a lifeboat that was not just sitting there but pulled onto shore. However, around it they could not find any footprints, any evidence of life, nothing. But something got that lifeboat to shore, then pulled it on. There were never any bodies found, anything else discovered, and it simply remains a mystery of how that boat got there. A lot of the theories that have to do with it reference back to the idea of Agartha and that uh, German soldiers from World War II who were moving that direction, one that may have got stranded there and later picked up, and that goes in line with the entire idea that Nazis found Agartha in Antarctica and then tried to move their troops there once the war was over. Abiogenic oil is the thought that oil as we know it is not actually a um, fossil fuels given from dinosaurs or other prehistoric creatures and is instead come from an entirely non-biotic process. Essentially it would work that carbon monoxide and hydrogen uh, rised up to the surface combined with zirconium and created a petrohydroxyl. What that essentially means is that through a mix of natural gases, oil was formed instead of the way that we normally think of it as fossil fuels. Secret societies today is vague, but you get the idea. Just the idea that the Freemasons, Illuminati, and stuff like that are all these conspiracy networks that still exist and operate today uh, outside of the public eye. Real Mizium is kind of hard to figure out on because I can't find a reference to any Mizium with real in the beginning of it, but Mizium itself is in reference to an event that happened on 4chan a few years back. Essentially, a new user appeared on the site called Mizium that said that they were an alien from a different planet who was simply stopping by, connected to the internet, and wanted to know if people had any questions. After answering questions in a sort of vague manner, people started requesting that they take pictures of their house or of their geographic location. Mizium then went around to these areas and started snapping pictures of people's houses from the sky or different areas of the earth and things such as, and it even got to the point that someone asked them to go take a picture of the moon to which they took a few and sent them back and through reverse Google image search, no one could find any records of these photos online. Furthermore, someone uh, asked Mizium to come to their house the person then went outside and started recording, and in the recording, you can see a giant triangular ship pass by overhead and keep on going. The guy filming starts freaking out, comes back to 4chan, says that Mizium's real, and then at the end of this entire thing, Mizium said, uh, well, gotta go, my family's here, and took off. So I guess real Mizium is just saying that Mizium was not a hoax, so yeah. Prison planets can have two possible definitions. One of them is the idea that the Kessel effect or Kessler syndrome, which is something that we've seen happen on Earth in which debris from satellites and things such as are continuously hitting and bouncing off of each other and essentially creating a cloud around the world till eventually we probably won't be able to get spaceships out because this clutter will be too much. This theory goes further to the point that the idea we haven't interacted with ter extraterrestrials yet is because they have done the same thing in their own time and made it impossible possible to escape their planet. The other theory is that humans are not the natural members of planet Earth. And some thousand years ago, humans were brought to Earth as a sort of prison planet by extraterrestrials. The evidence for this is saying such as humans are not meant to walk upright and that we constantly get lower back pains from the way our bodies are positioned and that we are supposed to be living in a different kind of atmosphere. This also would explain why such old world cults and religions had ideas of flying saucers and look to the stars and things such as, essentially as a means that we were put here as punishment and we spent the last thousand years trying to get back out. Malta Catacombs is in reference to a series of catacombs that were discovered in the 1960s around Malta, Italy. The stories of this one get weird. The way it was discovered is that home contractors were digging around the area and accidentally broke through the rock into this complete underground labyrinth that had never been discovered. After researchers went in, they discovered it was much, much bigger than just one room and instead was a necropolis, or city of the dead, in which 7,000 bodies were buried in these underground catacombs. What's especially weird is why they all had um, sort of a ritual done with their burial. It seems as incense was burned on each of them. Inside of there was Christians, Muslims, Jews, and other different uh, competing religions all buried in this one area. What's even weirder is that on examining them, several of the skulls were elongated and not to the point of skull binding that is found in several sort of African cultures in old world history, like these very, very long non-human looking skulls. It is estimated that the caves are as old as 4000 BC. 
Research became scant after a group of researchers went to the cave and upon getting to the end of one of the systems, one of the chief researchers said that she approached a giant drop off and then in shining her flashlight to the other side, she saw a sort of embankment that 25 people came out of, each of which were 20 feet tall and wearing robes. When they saw her with the flashlight, they all looked towards her and began reaching out their arms. Her and the rest of the research team got out of there, and a couple weeks later, 30 school students went to the area on a sort of field trip uh, to which they got lost, and people that were looking for them heard screaming and shouting, and none of them were ever found. Uh, the crew then got out of there, boarded it up, and to this day, it is a no-go zone. So, what's in the caves? Why were those bodies never found? And what were those creatures walking around in there? Amphibians in Iraq was near impossible to find information on. I'm pretty sure this is in reference to the lizard men of Iraq. Around a place in Iraq called Ubaid, there was a sort of coliseum that was found and discovered to be an old burial chamber. Upon going inside, there were several bodies and statues of old people from Iraq, but what was very weird is several thousand of these little statues were of lizard men, with these very elongated skulls and in different positions. What's even more interesting is why some may disclaim this and say, oh, it was an old world god. These were perfectly mixed in with the normal people statues, and they were all maintaining common poses kind of saying that it was just a natural occurrence. To this day, no one knows the source of where these lizard men came from or what the knowledge about them was, and they just exist as if old world history was okay with them. Phantom kangaroos are a phenomenon that has been found in the United States in which several people have reported seeing kangaroos in the woods or around their house. What's odd is there are several hundred occurrences of this, with it going from everywhere to someone saw them in the middle of the woods to someone saw one on their front porch, and this is as recently as 2018. It's not like some old uh, previous century concept. Some of these descriptions have them as being much larger than normal kangaroos and even armored. These descriptions match that of Procotodon, which is an old sort of kangaroo ancestor that uh, has remains been found in the United States in years previous, given the idea that maybe this is just an extinct animal that never actually went extinct and is existing in the forest of the United States. The Potomsky Crater is in reference to a giant crater-like structure found in Siberia. What's interesting is this, while it may look like a crater, on first viewing is anything but. It is a giant rock structure that just perfectly matches the shape of it, and what's even weirder is that the area immediately around the crater is very much overgrown as compared to the woods around it. Now while this may lead you to think radiation, there are no highly active radiation in the area. The nearby tribe of the Yakut has said that it is a place that people do not travel or else they get sick and die, and have even named the area Fire Eagle's Nest. Uh, one of the only research groups to ever go and try to take a look at it, because remember it's in the middle of Siberia, in 2005 had their leader die of a heart attack upon approaching it, and there hasn't been much research since. So yeah, make your own conclusions about that. Thomas Pinkin was an author that is still alive and is most known for his books he wrote in the 1960s. It would take way too long to explain all of the things that he talked about in his book, but essentially he was a fiction author that used like advanced science as a basis for his stories. Uh, more specifically, a concept he is famous for dealing with is that of Maxwell's demon, which is the idea that if you had a very small figure that could individually interact with particles and heat on a microscopic level, it could tip the balance of entropy and make physics work backwards. Uh, he used this as the basis for a lot of his books and is known as either having an under a higher understanding than the average person or creating concepts that are so abstract they've led to several concepts in modern theoretical physics. Animism is just the broad idea of applying a soul or spirit to anthropomorphic objects. It's actually where the idea of anthropomorphism comes from. So essentially you can imprint the idea of a spirit or character onto a physical item enough to the point that it eventually becomes real. The Dighton Rock is a rock that is found off the coast of the Taunton River in New Jersey. What's interesting about this rock is that it looks perfectly normal from a distance, but as you get close to it, you realize there are these very deep inscriptions all over it that do not make sense in any recorded language, and the depictions also don't match up with anything. Theories about this rock have ranged from King Solomon in showing that the depictions of it are that of the Old Testament, 
or Norse mythology and that it is an entire story of Odin laid out on the rock, but both of those ask the question, then why would this rock show up in New Jersey unless Solomon or the Norse or something like that arrived at America and brought the stone with them from all that time before? Uh, either way, it's still interesting that it got there with absolutely no recorded history of it being there. Bunkers and Mars is in reference to the fact that the Mars rover caught a few short glimpses in the middle of rock faces on Mars of what seemed to be these windows or cut out metal places. Uh, this is combined with the theory that water originally existed on Mars and says that the planet had a mass extinction event in which everyone had to go underground and that from looking at uh, the Mars rover's images, of the planet of Mars that we can see sort of these last remnants or possibly still living remnants of the Mars population. Triassic mystery is a little too vague for my liking because there are several Triassic mysteries when it comes to missing links and things such as. However, the one that I found the most reference is that of Cratero Corodon, which is essentially a giant omnivore that was discovered and its teeth don't make sense for its skull and it's supposed to be a sort of missing link. So. Yeah, that's it. Montanism comes from a man named Montanus and was an idea he developed in the second century AD, which essentially says that you can continue to expound on the Bible and get uh, insight through revelations. This was specifically done with him in which he saw that there would be a soon coming end of times and started sort of the first cult in this ideology, or at least first known religious cult in this ideology that God would come back soon, specifically at his church. Ideas of Montanism today are just that Christianity can be expounded upon if people receive direct information from God. The Sabich Tomatovic tape, uh, which I believe still translates in Serbian to sandwich tomato, is in reference to a Serbian porn star who claimed that she was roped by a giant spider. <laughs> Why is this a conspiracy theory? No, I'm not kidding on that. It goes more so to say that she was roped by the Jabba Fofi, or Jabba Fofi, which is a cryptid from South America, which is essentially a giant four foot wide spider. And while there is evidence to back up that existence, there is no evidence to back up this tape. However, she supposedly uh, became popular in something called Jinky Jinky, which is a Japanese ring of insect related films uh, and became a star with costumes and machines in that realm and I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Marco Rodin was originally a physicist who came up with the concept of the forever electron and that there is a, pa a path that an electron could follow in which it could convert energy without ever losing it. So essentially a uh, forever supplying power source. Since then, he has got very much so into esotericism and went on this long discovery to try to figure out the name of God and the source of God. Uh, and through this series of calculations he did, he figured out that the holy number was nine and that God's name was Ab. Abha, A-B-H-A, so yeah. Operation Paperclip was something that happened after World War II and is now pretty well known in which 1600 Nazi scientists were granted US citizenship for their assistance in the American rocket program and more specifically the space race. Uh, the theory goes on to say that the only reason we beat Russia to space is be through the help of German scientists. Planck feedback is the idea that as something is heated, it becomes more radioactive. So negative Planck feedback would be the idea that deriving temperature or energy from a system creates more radiation, or uh, in other words, adding heat to it would cancel out the radiation. And it's another one of those sort of like nonsensical concepts in uh, theoretical chemistry that you could remove radiation from a system or destroy it through amount of energy given in or taken out only backwards. Manichaeism is this third century concept of religion. It essentially applied ideas of Christianity, uh, Gnosticism, and pagan gods all into one. Uh, it originated in Persia and is essentially the idea that Christianity can present itself through pagan gods or modern rituals and things such as, and that all of these ideas of supposedly non-religious elements can come to create and make the godhead of sorts, so it's essentially combining Christianity with pagan deities. 
Valis is a novel written by Philip K. Dick, who was a famous science fiction author in the 1980s. Valis stands for Vast Acting Living Intelligence System. Essentially, it is the idea that God is a simulation, or rather we are uh, living through a simulation created by God. However, a lot of his theories apply back to Gnosticism, which again was mentioned in the last theory and several of the theories beforehand. And again, it all relates to that idea of there being a God and lesser gods. So what you could derive from this is that the Vala system itself he wrote about is one of these lesser gods. ICBM decoys has two different definitions. Uh, the first being that countries that do not have ICBMs will simply have fake ones in order to deter other world powers from attacking. So essentially uh, the whole gun, the paper bag thing. Also, for those who don't know, ICBM stands for Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Uh, the other idea of it is that whenever an ICBM is launched, there will be several fakes launched with the real one. Uh, just so that whatever system is trying to shoot it down has a lesser chance of actually stopping the missile. Pertoa, from everything I can find, is another reference to 4chan. For those that don't know, whenever someone posts on 4chan, their flag of origin and country is shown whenever they do so. For a small window a few years ago, there were a few flags that popped up that had the country listed as Portoa or Portoa, and had a unique flag that had never been seen before. Immediately afterwards, all those posts disappeared and 4chan simply acted like it was a glitch that never happened, leaving people to believe that Portoa or Portoya is a country that exists in a parallel universe. And that is it for tier 4. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Tier 5 will be up soon, as well as some other videos. Uh, I just finished finals with college, so now I've got a good window to make more content for you. And again, absolutely thank you guys for getting me to the point that I could be monetized. It really does mean a lot. And again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you to all of my patrons, but a very special thank you to my top tier patrons. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, Pef. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Publius. And thank you, Saucy. Link to that as well as the original iceberg image will be in the description as always. Finally, again, thank you guys for watching. Expect much more to come soon. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have another idea for a conspiracy video that should be up in the next few days. Uh, but once again, thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.